Yes, today we have the Titan Masters, and since they are so small and simple, I'll just do the first two waves in one video. Why did I buy the whole lot of them even though a quarter of them are just repaints? Because they're fun, that's why. Besides, this is my channel and I get to make the decisions around here, even if I end up doing combiners in 2017. Oh well, who isn't with all the Takara repaints? Your Highness, I'm sure it's not that noticeable. <laughs> So let's do a quick rundown on what these Titan Master sets are. The size class is essentially what would have once been the Legion class if Legends were still considered Commanders, which was after Scouts. The naming is still confusing, and I just really wish they'd stick with one name. At a 10 or a pack, it's hard not to pick all of these up. I went over to the local Toys R Us in search of these buggers, wanting to pick up a Crash Bash and a Terrible and leave it at that. However, after fiddling with them at a cafe near there, I decided to go back and pick up the other two. And then come Wave 2, I just got the whole set of four to save myself the trouble. Now, the reasons a whole bunch of fans fade these guys is because they're representations of characters that in all honesty wouldn't sell in this kind of line. I mean, already Transformers is having trouble selling the R.I.D. character, even though they have such diverse personalities in the show. If they find it hard to sell those toys, what chance do these toy only characters have? I mean, who's gonna know the difference between Terrible and just some random blue genericon? So, instead of leaving them out altogether, they decide to have these head only sets to keep the Radicons happy and to appetize the kids who are into the whole interchange changeability of the line. Yeah, you gotta remember that us collectors aren't the only ones buying these, and kids are going to swap and change their heads as they please. But of course, the hardcore G1 fans would rather have full toys of these guys, and my god they were angry, until Legends Braum was announced. This hasn't confirmed that we're getting any of these guys again in another size class, but it's at least quelled the hate plague for a while. Honestly, even if I had a connection to these guys, which in some cases I do, I still wouldn't mind. I really don't care. These are fun enough to be their own little thing. Oh, and before you ask, I'm keeping my promise and not repeating the headmaster articulation. Go back and watch the highbrow review for more details on how you can move the headmasters and what I think about them and how they're transectors and all that stuff. Just go watch it, it's a good review. I need the views, damn it! So starting with wave one, obviously, let's kick off with Loudmouth. Running theme of the line, characters get their names swapped out because of lost trademarks. This guy's actually Siren, a G1 headmaster car dude, and if you're wondering why the head looks like Ghost Shooter, it's because they were from the same toy. That said, here are the similarities between this and the original. He has red goggles in the head mode, and the car has red on it. That's it. The dull grey has been replaced with a shiny silver, and the car mode is now a lovely Cybertronian hovering vehicle. The head is no longer a bulky mess, and the blue details are limited to the side of Loudmouth's face, which in my opinion is one of the gripes I have. So with all these changes, I guess you don't have to call it by its original name after all. It's like Revenge of the Fallen Devastator. No, not that abomination! Yeah, that's the one, the Legends one. I don't feel comfortable calling it Devastator, but by no means is it a bad toy, I just call it something else. I've forgotten what I used to call it as a child, but I... No, I had a name for it or something. Robot mode is pretty sweet, thankfully using plastic that doesn't wash out the details. It's really nice that they painted the goggles. It brings the things to life in an absence of paint everywhere else. The head mode is really nicely sculpted, but a bit generic. He works with at least two of the Titans Return figures I've got out of four. Surprisingly, something looks way off on Highbrow though. I'd have thought the blue and grey would have worked fine, but nope. Of course, Loudmouth, and I've written Nightbeat in the script for some reason, can sit in the car. And by god is this adorable. Just the way his arms sit on the side of the opening and how his little head peeks out, I can't look at this thing without getting a big dumb grin on my face. The integrated mode is supposed to be a tank, but I see it more as one of those troop carriers from Star Wars. Unfortunately, the legs make no attempt to hide, and there's a huge gap at the back. You could stick another headmaster in there, but I'm sort of worried I'll get flagged for inappropriate content if I do that. Wait, crap, I've already done it in the footage. Damn it, damn it, damn it! It's an easy fix though. And no, not the inappropriate position. Just fold the legs out and down and hey presto, the void is filled. Mostly. Hey, it's a fan mode. There's not much you can do about it. And now, memorize this phrase. The gun mode looks stupid because that phrase is going to be popping up on most of them. Not the next one, but most of them. Next up, we have Nightbeat, for real this time, whom you probably already know by now. Honestly, I was a little shocked with this. Why now? Didn't we get one already? Couldn't you have turned this into a generic drill guy like Nose Cut? Oh, right. But in all seriousness, this has got to be the worst Titan Master out of the bunch. It's unfortunate that it fails in almost every mode because this guy is kind of a big deal in the comics, and is one of the more recognisable Headmasters from G1. Well, at least in this line. All that Simon Furman work for nothing, I suppose. The Robot mode is okay, I guess. The yellow washes out most of the details, and the mouth plate is a little messy, but it's not terrible. That is, until you turn it into the Head mode! Oh my god, this is horrible! The face looks like it's telling you to end its miserable life! I won't, because I don't really see a need to throw this Thing away, but seriously, the paint is beyond ugly with messy yellow washing over the eyes and the colour scheme fits with pretty much nobody except Blur. And I mean, who wants to buy a Blur? No, not the Takara one, the Hasbro one. The riding vehicle mode is... um... 
what is this? It says it's a jet, but this brick is never gonna fly. I mean, essentially, it's just a cockpit on tank treads. I can see it sort of being a supersonic car if you fold up the wings, but it's really not that plausible anyway, even aligned with this being a tank. For the integrated mode, I suggest slipping it in the other way as it gets stuck otherwise. This looks a little bit better, but the whole design screen's lazy. I mean, the only thing the head does is, oh my, look, it's an engine block, ha ha ha, yes, I'm totally an engine block. And the cockpit's still visible, and the side flaps don't lock in, and the treads aren't painted, and everything just sucks. This figure is pretty much horrible. The only thing that it's good for is if you want to give your combiners a drill hand, and it's only barely good for that. It's horrible. Speaking of which, horrible is quite fantastic. Or it's terrible in this line. Well, I don't know why either of them would be trademarked, but oh well. The grey and dark shiny blue combo does wonders for his vehicle mode and his head mode, which may not be sculpted as well as the others, but has a hilarious face. And seriously, it looks like he's pulling off turtle face there, only with sharp teeth. His robot head mode is a real treat, almost looking like Optimus Prime, but not quite. Unfortunately, his colour scheme doesn't work with any of the guys I currently have, but it's still awesome on its own. And I mean, hey, Trigger happy, might work on that. The drivable vehicle mode is what Night Beats should have been. Sure, the treads still aren't painted, but on a colour scheme this epic, I can let it slide. Plus, there's enough sculpted detail to forget about it, like the missiles. Didn't have to put them there, but I'm glad they did. Seriously, this feels like they've downscaled a bigger action figure. In a good way, that is. And the integrator mode is, a uh, jet. Why does it feel like Nightbeat knocked everything off this figure? I mean, the jet mode's not perfect, but it's a little better at least. The treads blend in a lot better, and the nose cone works with the blockier aesthetic. And the robot actually fits in, and it's got guns at the bottom. This figure is so much better, and it's so awesome that they can pack all this fun into ten bloody dollars. Unfortunately, there is one major issue. All together now, the gun mode looks stupid. Still, I'm glad this mode suffered and not the others. Finally, we have Crash Bash, who was supposed to be... Squeeze play. How do you go from a mutant crab to a dinosaur and a turkey? How? And beyond that, why these colors? How does the purple change? Where did the blue go? And squeeze play. They really had a robot in G1 called squeeze play. For a Decepticon, that name sure sounds sissy. But I digress. The robot mode is probably the blandest of the lot, and the head can't decide whether it's a Power Rangers suit or a Carnage cosplayer. The head mode... Ugh. This is an ugly head mode, even by purposefully ugly standards. The paint on this thing isn't doing any favours, with tons of detail missed on the sides. Colour-wise, it fits with Mind Wipe, but the shapes don't match up at all. I don't think any toy in this line would work with this face, to be honest, considering the blocky aesthetic most of the figures have been going for, except maybe Galvatron, but I have no clue. Once again, one of the figures that's on its way. The turkey mode doesn't work at all. The wings are clearly kibble, and the back makes no sense. The bird head may look menacing, but posing Crash Bash on this thing is near impossible, especially when articulation is limited to ball-jointed legs, wings that don't move in the right direction, and a hinged neck that only goes up and down. So, I think it's time to get to the mode that makes up for all of it. But before that, just remember not to flip the gun handle forward in turkey mode. That thing and keep him away from the fembots. The dinosaur mode is by far the best integrated mode of the wave. The figure sacrifices everything to ensure that this mode works, and the transformation is ingenious. On a figure this size, with the arms and the legs and the way they fit, I'm amazed they made it work. Unfortunately, mine has a few stress marks, and I couldn't get a refund because I lost the receipt. But it's okay. They haven't gotten any worse after I transformed the thing 50 times. The only thing that detracts from this mode is the tail, which is a turkey head. It just looks dumb. Like the gun mode! It's a T-Rex on its back, firing laser blasts out of its ass. Must have eaten a Kansai. Yeah, now that's a Kansai collection of shitty Japanese food! And yes, the thing has articulation. Limited ball-jointed arms, ball-jointed legs, a hinged jaw with moulded teeth on the legs, nice touch, and a hinged tail. It's mostly the same as the turkey, however it works a lot better here. All in all, this dino mode makes it able to stand alongside Terrible as best of the wave, which is why they repurpose these two figures for wave 2. Yes, onto the next wave and half the bloody thing is repaints. It's not terrible though at this size class, but I can't help but think it would have been better to package a new toy in there instead. Still, there haven't been that many repaints in other size classes, so you know. Well, I guess Optimus Prime was a retool of Magnus, and Soundwave was basically Blaster, 
then there's Guess Away, and Bumblebee will become Cliff Jumper, and Braum will become Trailbreaker, and then there's all the bloody Voyage. Oh, bugger. Still, if you're gonna do repaints, nice job going with the not crap ones. Since we just did the Dino, we'll do the Dino again to save time with Clobber who's basically Grimlock. Why don't they call it Grimlock? I mean, they pretty much got the license for it. And they're naming Brawn the same name. Ah, that makes no sense. Right off the bat, these new colors give the head much more definition. Not as a Power Ranger, not as Carnage, but freaking Ultron. The plastic on the Headmaster mode unfortunately clashes with the rest of the face, but it still looks freaking awesome. It seems to work best with Mind Wife, Mind Wife. Mind Wife. <laughs> and Weird Wolf, although with the former, I find it looks a bit like a Fembot. The other guy I suppose it'll work with is Double Cross, and I'm pretty sure someone will mod it into a singular head. In fact, if somebody does do it, they owe me 10 hypothetical dollars, patented by Dr. Lockdown. It seems Hasbro shared my lack of enthusiasm with the turkey mode because they opted out painting the eyes. Nice idea, but it's used on a part that is only beneficial to this mode and the gun, so in the end I wouldn't have minded the eyes instead. But damn though, is the Dino mode not meant for Grimlock? I mean, this just works so well. I actually like the RID design, but it works better than that. I'll just tell you right away, this guy is leagues above Crash Bash. The colors just work. Meanwhile, how does Terrible's repaint fare? Well, after navigating a minefield of angry G1ers, I can safely say that Skytread, aka Flywheels, isn't bad. Not fantastic, but not bad either. Whilst I still prefer the blue original, this new color scheme is categorically better. Most of the details come across better in this brown, except for the head. No clue why. Meanwhile, this head sculpt is awesome. It's painted well, it's proportioned well, and it's just begging for a proper body. For now, you can place it on Mindwipe or Chrome Dome with no problems. Seriously, what's with Mindwipe? He's taking all the heads like a champ. Can I get one compatible with poor old Highbrow in here? Nothing's worked with him. For the tank, the turret may no longer be painted, but they did paint the missiles. Nice touch. Then when you turn it into jet mode, it reveals extra crimson paint on the wings. Really nice touch. Now you may notice the headmaster isn't properly pegged in on the top. Well, according to other reviewers, you can't fit in the head properly. Well, is that true? Have you tried giving it an extra shove? Seriously, couldn't you be brave enough to shove it in there a bit? Really? The plastic's not gonna break that easily. This isn't KFC. Between the two, it's obvious that this one has more pain. A better head sculpt, and no weaknesses over the original. Categorically, it's better, but I still prefer Terrible. We can all have our choices. Finally, onto the last two, the new guys. If you thought fans were angry about flywheels, poor old ape face is getting the old it's fun, but I wanted a triple change of Voyager treatment. Can't people just accept that it's a fun little guy? Seriously? You know kids won't buy something like this, right? Give it some time, wait for King Kong vs. Godzilla, maybe then you'll get a proper toy. As for the toy itself, the headmaster is unfortunately the most generic. Not a lick of paint, a head that is as close to Soundwave as you can get without being Soundwave, and a well sculpted but dull painted and ultimate generic looking face sculpt. And oh boy, what a surprise, it works with mind wipe. Whoop doo 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 doo. Thankfully, we've got a nice ape mode to make up for it. And before you say Harambe, this is an ape, not a gorilla. You can't make the Optimus Primal jokes, sorry about that wrong species. The way the headmaster fits is quite adorable, and the colors are broken up just enough to be interesting. His little axe on the articulation, with nothing aside from sort of ratcheted shoulders, but it's okay. This guy was only 10 bucks, not really much to expect. You're fine as long as you don't deploy the weapon handle. Seriously, these guys are perverted, aren't they? The jet mode seriously reminds me of Terrible and Skytread. However, where Nightbeak took the worst parts of these toys, Ape Face only takes the best. This has to be the best looking jet out of the line. I guess it's easier to make a jet out of an ape out of a tank. Yeah, sure, because that engineering totally makes sense. Basically, this with the arms out is the gun mode, so of course it looks stupid. However, what's not completely stupid is that you can do this with mind wipe. Instructions time! Okay, now you may have seen many fan modes like this, but this one's mine and I'm just going to show you. Basically, you just make sure the headmaster's off and you start by sort of transforming. Shut up, thunder. I need to record this before you finish. But I digress. You need to start by sort of transforming mind wipe into his bat mode just by folding up the legs like you would. But here is, you know, sort of, instead what you do is you turn around the waist. And then from here, you can, things start getting interesting. You unfold the legs like normal but you keep these up. Now when you unfold the legs you also need to have this foot part out sideways then slowly just bring that over the side like so and that will make a wing. These don't peg in anywhere they're just held in by friction but his knee joints are the ones that are kind of not good to hold it up but in this configuration Everything's okay. Uh, I usually just bring these up just a little bit to make things a bit easier. 
and then of course these to the side and the bat head back. Of course there's no way to actually peg the bat head in, but you can stick the Headmaster in. I almost said Titan Master. I don't call these things Titan Masters, I call them Headmasters. And I'm going by Japanese continuity, so stick them in the transector. That didn't sound... That didn't sound bad at all. Jeez, that could be an innuendo. Then you just take the jet and you stick it on. MGO did something like this. I'm not sure if this was the exact configuration. I don't think it was the exact configuration. But look, now you have a combined mode for the jet. And it works pretty well. Uh, this is a little bit loose and comes out... Not, not like it, when you shake it around it doesn't come out. But, you know, if you really get into it, of course it's going to fall off. But it's not designed to be like that. Originally that part was designed to be here. I don't think this was an intended feature. It's just a really nice thing you can do. And now it looks like if this was if this was painted black, this could honestly be something that Batman would ride. And I am incredibly shit at doing voice impressions. Finally, we have Brawn, the guy who made everyone stop hating these things when the Legends figure was announced. Even if, once again, it means nothing. Just because Brawn got a figure doesn't mean anyone else is getting a figure. I really doubt they're gonna make a Voyager 8 face, thank you very much. Out of all the robot modes, this is pretty much the blandest. Doesn't look too bad next to Nightbeam, as the colours are more appealing, but there's just nothing here. No sculpting, no paint, no edges, just nothing. Even the head looks bland. Honestly, I've never been a fan of Brawn to begin with, but even here it just feels mediocre at best. And the eyes. My god, the eyes! They stare blankly into your soul! And then this... this... bike? Why is it a bike? Why does it have to be a bike? Is Brawl... isn't Brawl supposed to be a tank character? Why not just make him a tank like everything else? I mean, that wouldn't have been too hard to transform into. And then, the way he rides it is just stupid. This isn't how you ride a bike. I wouldn't dare try this, as I would probably get run over in the process. As for his Jeep mode, it looks really dumb. It's a nice design, but we're going back to the engine block design again. It's a real shame. The treads are a nice touch overall, and the boxy aesthetic works, but this stupid headmaster ruins it. That is, until you fan mode it so it's sitting upside down. But before that, the gun mode is... Actually good. It's actually the best out of the line in terms of gun modes, except for the fact the handle doesn't really click into place. Still, good job. So of course, as always, these Titan Masters have fan modes. And this one is one of the easier ones. You don't need another figure to fix it, you can just do it. What you basically do is you just have him kind of kneeling like that, arms forward. You insert him as, as if you were going to pl plug him in, but as if you were going to sit him down, but because the legs are back, they can actually peg into the back there, and there's no clearance issues if you make sure this is all the way up. And look, he can drive his own little car. Now that is adorable. This is probably one of the best integrated modes next to good old Crash Bash Clobber combo. Just driving the car like that. Just look at him driving the car like that. Just look at him. He's so cute. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Unlike the bloody dogs that won't shut up as I'm trying to film this thing. So all in all, how do these turn out? Well, in order of worst to best, Nightbeat fails miserably. Brawn is okay, and I'm pretty sure I've said Brawl sometime in this review by accident. Loudmouth does fairly well. For some reason, spelt Laugmouth in the script. What is with me in spelling mistakes? Apeface comes in at middle tier. Terrible and Sky Trade to turn out pretty solid. And for the Dino mode alone, Crash Bash and Clobber are must-haves. I'd say definitely get Clobber and at least either Terrible or Skytread. The rest are optional. Except for Nightbeat. Steer clear of that thing. Even if you want to customize it, don't bother. I never thought I'd get buyer's remorse out of something this small. Well, I kind of did that one time with Mate Toys, but that's another story for another time. No, no, that's not the next review. I don't do previews for next reviews anymore.